come, Daddy. I'm here. Let's go to John. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm telling you, Brother Christian, you had to push me. I'm serious. We ain't got time to think today. We got to go. We got to go in. The waters is already stirred. Thank you, Jesus. Going to John 20. Matter of fact, take me down to E flat. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. John 20. And we're going to start at verse 24. And we're going to read down to verse 31. 24 to 31. Evangelist, when you read it, I need the scriptures to convict the people of God today. So read it with authority, out of respect for God's word, his mind, his reason. Let's stand as the word of God is being read. Thank you, Jesus. John 20, 24 through 31. Amen. John chapter 20, verses 24 through 31 reads, One of the 12 disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, We have seen the Lord. But then he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. Put my fingers into them and place my hands into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hand. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. your neighbor and say neighbor. neighbor come on I need you to say it like you got the Holy neighbor. Spirit in you neighbor. say neighbor. Neighbor. Transform the neighbor transform the culture and I want you to look at that same neighbor and say oh Jesus' name, that you can give us anything and everything that we have said, done, or thought in Jesus' name. Let your will be done today. I pray right now, God, for you to invade our space. I pray you break down the walls that cause us to be blind to you. I pray you tear down rebellion and anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ. I pray that you take residence in our heart and let the Holy Spirit live in us and rest on us. Holy Spirit, convict us of sin, God's righteousness and the coming judgment. Lead and guide us into all truth. Teach us truth and tell us about the future. Bring back to our remembrance everything Jesus said. I pray that you be our comfort today. Be the spirit of truth in our life today. Overall, your will be done. Give your people the message they need to hear. And allow us to articulate it as clear as possible. Give us the message, me the message that I need to hear. And allow me to obey it. I thank you once again, Lord, for you doing the work this weekend for us. We can never get tired of blessing you because that's all we're going to be doing when we get to heaven. In Jesus' name, heaven is still the goal. And I thank you, Lord, for your will being done. In Jesus' name, amen. As you take your seat, say, get up. Thank you, Jesus. This is going to be so fitting for us today because I want to show you this video. This video is really short. 
but it's a good place to put it. In belief, in belief, 
And what equals faith? What equals faith? What's the formula for faith, Sister Kanaya? Equals faith. Knowledge plus belief equals faith. Here's the thing. If you don't believe, you don't have faith. Because what you put your belief in, because you can only put belief in or on. And we know that we put it, we put it in the word and on Christ. And so if you don't have the word of God, you can't believe on it, right? Which means that you can't have faith. Faith is not heard, it's seen. It's seen. People don't say, hey, Brother Hakeem is saved because he talks it all the time. They say he's saved because they see him walking it out. Amen. 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 Faith and holiness is the two things you're going to see through scripture that you can't talk about. You got to show. Amen. Amen. Holiness is to be set apart. But if you're in everybody's vineyard, then you're not set apart. God, I'm a preacher because if everybody got access to you, you're not set apart. You're common. You're not holy. Hallelujah. And we can put it to a household. Guess what? Don't plastic forks. That, that's common. But the, but the metal forks that's in the mama's china closet, you know what I mean? That nobody can touch. If you touch, you get a beating. That's called holy because they're set apart. Amen. And so we got to we gotta be true to everything. Amen. God, God ain't looking for you to do nothing else but to display holiness because he said, he said, I am holy. And so if I'm holy, I want you to be holy. Amen. Amen. And they, when we are walking out or set apart to show holiness, guess what? That's why people see your faith. Amen. See, the world is supposed to come to us and ask us questions. Right. The world is supposed to say, oh, snap, brother, Christian got a title. Is that what a man of God looks like? But we're not supposed to take tips from the world. And the only time we get sometimes, you know, people to come in for church to make sense is that we got to relate to the world. Why is the praise team singing Beyonce? That's not holiness and that's not being set apart. That's being common. She needs Jesus. Oh, come on, y'all. I don't care if y'all like her or not. Who it is what it is. <laughs> Amen. Amen. She still got a soul. She's demonic, but she got a soul. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And guess what? Just because you like, you know, to the left, to the left, you like all that stuff, that don't mean that it's right. Amen. Amen. And guess what? Whatever you feed grows. So don't get mad because you're dealing with depression when you feed yourself with her music. Wow. Yeah. This is facts. And this is real. And I know it's going to be out. You know what church you came to today. So, oh, well. Oh, well. Amen. 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 Come on. Thank you, Elder. Thank you. But this is the hour where God is challenging us to, to, and reminding us we got to return to believing. Yes. We got to believe. It's no point in clapping and stinking. Doing all that stuff. And you go home and don't believe. You know how I know that you are, you are believing in the word and believing on Christ? It's when you can literally go through hell and high water and still come out not just with a praise. You come out with the soundness of your mind because you know who kept your mind in perfect peace. Amen. Amen. When go, people die in the family left and right, left and right, left and right. But I still trust God and I know it's a purpose out of this. This is how I know that you're believing. See, belief is not a one-time act. It's something we do continuously. Yeah. Amen. Every day I wake up and I read again, and then I, I believe again on what I just read. Because it's so easy to lose the belief that God what he requires from us. And so we have to get to a place where we fight for belief. Now check this out. When you go to... John 20. You see a few things going on in here. You see Mary getting to the tomb, and she's getting to the tomb, and she realizes there's two men standing at the head and the feet of where Jesus was lying. And when she gets there, what happens? She asks them where did they take his body? 
because Mary is filled with so much grief that she forgot what Christ said. See, this is how we know, you know, how you're believing, because you, the Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance what he said. Amen. And this is why you keep believing on what he said. But if you can't remember scripture at a time you're going through hell and high water, you lost your belief along the way. Right. Amen. And if you need a song to get you back to belief, you lost your belief along the way. Amen. Because what's keep us going? And I'm going to go back to the scripture again. What keeps my mind sound ain't because I heard a good song lyric. What keeps my mind sound is because he told me he'll keep my mind in perfect peace. If I, if I, if I, see, we don't want the responsibility. If I keep my mind staying on him. Amen. So if you don't believe him, your mind is not on him, which is why you're losing it. You're losing your mind because you lost your belief along the way. And so she sat here, she's grieving, and she's sitting here like, huh, when did you take his body? Because in her head, she wanted to go get him. She forgot that he was Lord, priest, and king. And then as she's coming out of the tomb, she ran across Jesus. And she was like, she thought it was the gardener. She's so filled with grief, God, that she can't even sense his presence. Now, this ain't just Jesus the common Jesus that turned water into wine. This is Jesus in a, in, in a glorified body. Which literally means there's no way for you not to feel his glory. But you're so filled with grief that he died that you can't even sense him. And so what, what, what Jesus had to do is let her know who he was. And when he let her know who he was, what's the first thing she tried to do? Cling to him. Jesus said, no, don't touch me. I haven't accepted to my father yet, and I do want to see my daddy. It's so crazy that when you put the scriptures in play, you know, you need, you put a high priority on scripture. It makes so much sense that even Jesus said, whoo, finally got that sin off me. I want to go to Jesus. And we scared to even talk about death in the church. We're going to die one day. We're going to die one day. Oh, you, you, you ain't planning for it. We get it. But you're going to die one day. What will your death look like, though? Where will you go when you die? Because here, we ain't preaching everybody to heaven because we know everybody ain't living a godly life. So I had preached funerals that I couldn't even say anything to the people. I had to look over the dead person and just preach to the family and say, hey, we don't know where they at. Well, if you want to get somewhere where, where it's a promise of eternal life, yeah. I need you to yeah. do what he may not have done. Yeah. And this is real. And if you ever pay attention, the scriptures are true. Oh, kids, honor your parents so that your days will, you know, you have long life on the earth. Amen. Right? And if you look through the world, I don't care what nobody say, we ain't got to do no reform. We got to do it. If we're going to do a reform, do a reform in your home. Because what's happening is these kids, a lot of these kids are getting taken out because the scriptures are true. They can't live long because they don't honor their parents. They can't live long because they feel like their parents owes them something. And the Bible didn't say for you to honor them if they were good. Honor your parents, good or bad, so that you can live. Now, I don't know about you. If I got a promise to live, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to do what I have to do to live. If they say, hey, they're giving up millions of dollars right now, y'all, y'all going to get up and just run down that street. Freak what he said, it's a big dollar down there. You're going to do it because it's a promise that, yo, you run down that street, you're going to get a million dollars. But the scripture says, honor them. And children can't honor their parents because of the brokenness they have from them. And so we got to get back to giving truth to our kids. My dad, I guess a lot of things I can say about my dad. There's a lot of things I can say about my mom. I mean a lot. But you know what I had to learn to do? They can only do the best that they could for where they were. And so if in my God, no, I don't have a heaven or a hell to put none of y'all in. Because guess what? Hell ain't no 
them yet. This is why we cry out and spare not and say, open your eyes and let's live right. Amen. Amen. And so because of that, I had to learn to let God give me something that my parents may not have ever given me or will ever give me. So that means that I had to forgive them while they're still trying to hurt me. That don't make no sense. Nobody said you had to stay there. God just said you had to honor them. What does honor look like for you? Amen. Amen. And if you can get it off your heart, what you just did, when we talk about breaking generational curses, you're the, now the catalyst for the next generation to be better. Amen. Amen. Because now instead of feeding them with bitterness, you're giving them something that they need. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so, Jesus revealed himself to them. We get up to, to her. We get up to the thing where We're sitting here looking at this guy named Thomas. Now, when I was growing up, they used to call him Doubting Thomas because he just, he just had a lot of doubt. But you see in verse 24, Thomas was one of the 12 called. This is important because at this time, you know, when Jesus revealed himself to his you know, disciples, it wasn't just the 12, it was all of them. Because at one time, there were many disciples. That's why he sent them out two by two. Amen. So he's revealing himself to his disciples, right? Here's the thing. When he did it, they were excited and they were happy. They were excited and happy because they seen the Lord. And then this young man come because they came to him and said, huh, guess what, man? We seen the Lord. He really did raise from the dead. And Thomas is like, I won't believe it unless he give me some evidence. I need to see him. Remember, we just two days ago watched this man die on the cross. So I ain't going to want to believe nothing until he physically come down and let me touch his nail scarred hand. And not just that. Because I'm doubting Thomas, I need more proof. I need to touch his side because I seen that soldier pierce his side and I watched blood and water float out of his side. So I need to see something that, you know, to make me a believer. I'm going somewhere. And so when they did that, right, eight days passed. Now let's check this out real quick before we move on. The Lord showed up at the place where his disciples is, and because Thomas wasn't there, Thomas missed out on the blessing that Jesus brought. Because the scripture says when Jesus came the first time, you know what happened? He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Now, why is this important? Because now we bring it up to you. Some of y'all only came to church because it's Easter. That's how you, we, we do it. It's Easter, Christmas. But you're missing out on what Jesus is giving you when you can't be consistent to church. Because he's passing by the church, giving you what you need on a daily basis. I'm sorry, I don't have no bunnies and candies and flowers and all this stuff. I just got the word of God. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Because I want you to live. I'm, we're, when are we going to get tired of living beneath the means that God has given us? When are you going to get tired of fighting with a devil instead of rebuking one? When are you going to get tired of receiving all of this stuff? I need somebody to pray for me. You don't have no power to pray. You? You don't? When are you going to get tired of that? You was tired of being broke, so you got a job. You was tired of being lonely, so you got a girlfriend or a boyfriend. But you mean to tell me you have no care for your soul? You don't, you don't want your soul healed? The devil's a liar. It is our job to wake up your spirit this morning, this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, on Facebook. Everywhere you get from me, you're going to get Jesus. And if man don't want his page, man, he can upload another dumb video. Nobody wants to see that. You need to see that. Turn it on. Play 
in your ears at night, I promise you demons will get away from you. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because God is calling his people because I'm telling you, take it for what it is. There's something coming for this city. The enemy has an assignment. You can't see children being weird like this and don't think that, that the enemy is not coming for the city. Amen. Amen. And so if he is coming for the city, will he devour you when he comes in, when he gets here? Amen. Amen. And so I'm challenging you, don't miss another Sunday at church. God is trying to build your spirit up. He, wants you, he don't want you to be who you are. He wants you to actually go home and enjoy your family, not gossip about it when they leave. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to go home and see some bald head kids. Yes. Yes, they are so awesome. They're getting on my nerve, but I love them. I don't want to have to regret being a father. Because you know what I'm doing? I'm putting seeds in me to, to now hate them later. When I'm going through hell and high water, you know the first thing I'm going to do? Instead of giving them what they need, I'm going to yell at them. I'm going to push them away. I'm going to reject them. Because what I did was fill my heart with seeds of hatred for them. Amen. It was written so that you can read it and believe on it and to know that his name has weight behind it. Amen. You have, because of his name, the power to go into atmospheres and use his name to make that atmosphere line up to his name. Jesus. And so and my question is, child of God, why are you stressed out? Why? Why are you stressed out when you got power in his name that says, in the name of Jesus, I don't know what the heck did I walk into. But in the name of Jesus, this atmosphere will line up. Hallelujah. I'm so serious. At the name of Jesus, Elder Marv, if you don't know how to put the name of Jesus on Sister Amanda, that's why you, you want to throw yourself out the window. Yeah, yeah. You should be able to look at her. In the name of Jesus. I don't know. What's your, in the name of Jesus? Y'all y'all yo, laughing. I'm so serious. It works. Because his name has weight. Sister Pastor should be able to say, this mind is weird. But in the name of Jesus, renew my thoughts. Why am I sad? In the name of Jesus. Why am I hurt today? In the name. I'm serious. When you learn how to apply the name, you get results. And guess what? That gives you more joy to say thank you. Because you're not a person that's just using the name illegally. You are a believer because your belief was written and you apply what it said. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm about to mess up, but in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. They lied on me again. In the name of Jesus. We're going to cast down every lie. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it'll make you feel better. Yeah. It'll make you feel better. It'll make you weightless. It'll bring you into a new revelation of who Jesus is. Yeah. Wow. I have authority to use your name. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to use that tonight on chant. In the name of Jesus. Sleep. <laughs> Don't you wake up. Sleep. Are you waking up every five minutes sleep? I'm so serious. <laughs> we gotta wake up looking like we done been on the kids at the beach all night, but because my eyes is all drooping bags everywhere, and he wake up. <laughs> Demonic baby. Demonic baby. He waking up all night long. And we the ones that gotta work today. Jesus. But I'm so serious. We use the name. And because of that, guess what? You can keep trusting in that name. You can keep trusting in that name because you realize that name gave you a reason to live. We're living the best life. We're living the best life. Everybody want to live a life like it's golden. I'm living a life like it was given. I would got bars. <laughs> Atheist 
atheists believe your Bible. Yes, they do. If you want some credibility, they believe. Go ask, uh, you know, any atheist. Go ask any Muslim. They they gonna try to put a cap on it. But guess what? It's still hypocrisy. You can't believe one thing and not believe the other because our whole Bible is connected. Amen. 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 You can't find no flaw in Genesis and think Revelation is gonna contradict it. Amen. The devil's a liar. You're trying to change the scriptures to get your your will or your agenda across. Yeah. But the scriptures are consistent. The same Jesus that was in the beginning. How do we know it? Because guess what? When you go to Genesis, it says in the beginning God created. But if you go to John, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And if we travel a little bit longer, we can go over to Colossians. And it tell us that nothing was created except for him, by him. you can never have for me. Okay. I ain't got the cuss to have fun with you. That's right. That's right. Amen. We ain't got to be brawling out in the street to have fun. That's called toxicity. And I'm a grown man. I'm 40. I don't have time to be out here in toxicity. Yeah. No, no, no. It's not me being weird. It's me just being grown. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. And guess what? I'm not grown because out of pride, he gave me new life. Yeah. So I'm not going to put this new life everywhere. Amen. But what I'm going to do is if I have to go somewhere, I'm going to be like the song, I'm just a nobody. Trying to tell everybody about somebody who can change. Mr. Q, he said he was going to help me. Who can change anybody. See, that's how we have to be. I don't need my name called to give somebody Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to tell you this, because I had to repent yesterday. I was in CLFC. I oh, know that's here. That's Wait. I was in CLC. <laughs> Shows you you're on my mind. Okay. So when I was in CLC, getting it. Yes, getting the communion for today because we you know we had some unfortunate visitors that got into your basket and they they got high on Jesus. <laughs> They went in there and just got drunk off Jesus from the communion. And so, you know, they, they went through all this. So we had to go get more. So while I was in there, I was in line. And it was a lady in front of me. And the, I kept hearing God say, just tell her to be encouraged. Just tell her to be encouraged. Just tell her to be encouraged. That's it. And I kept sitting here trying to find an excuse. Like, all right, I'll tell her when I get out this line. I'll tell her this and that. I'll tell her this and that. To the whole point, I get up to the cash register, and she gone. And I felt so guilty. Like, the weight fell on my heart so much that I had a missed opportunity. Because I'd rather give God an excuse than just simply do what he said. And that's crazy. It reminded me of Moses. Sitting there, when well, I can't talk right. And every excuse that he did, God came back and corrected it. And gave him a different way. And so I'm sitting there, I felt so bad, Elder, that I was sitting there, I had got in the car. And I, I mean, I, I darn near almost cried because I said, I don't know what this lady could have been going through. But I missed the opportunity because I gave God an excuse. And so because of that, it kind of shifted the rest of my day. And I just kept thinking, dang, what if that would have just made her not commit suicide? What if that would have really just made her like go home and fight for her marriage or just go home and don't kill her kids? Like I, We don't know what it is. It could be something weird. You know what I mean? What if that would have kept her off the corner? We don't know. But I sat here and I said, my God. I said, I did this the second time I had a missed opportunity in my life. And the first time was with my cousin. And I was going to church and walk, walking past him. Every Sunday he was out there on the step. On the step, and I'm just walking past him. This one day 
I heard God say, say something. And I was like, no, man. He be all right. Literally, that next Sunday, after not listening to God, didn't see him. Didn't see him for like two, almost two, three Sundays until I seen him on the news in somebody's car killed. He was killed. They shot him like, oh, and I'm not exaggerating, like 70 times. Chopped his body up, threw him in a trunk, burned him at Strawberry Mansion schoolyard. And I was sitting there like, oh my God, the weight of guilt on me because of missed opportunity. Because now every time we decide to not obey God, you know what happens? You know what happens? That shows that we trust sin more than God. We trust us more than God. And so I'm saying that to say to you, we can't afford to have missed opportunities because we fail to believe what he said. If he told us to live out this life the way it needs to, you don't get to go home and give him an excuse. You have to. Your husband, your kids, your wife, your neighbors, your job, whoever, can get saved because of you. But if you're moving weird, hiding behind God's name, you want to you be the storm that everybody's trying to get away from. Facts. We got God, God has to make sense because the word makes sense. Amen. You can't say he says something today and then change it tomorrow with a whole different idea because that didn't work. The devil's a liar. That's not how he works. Jonah, go preach. Go preach, Jonah. I'm good. After he got in that belly of the well, did God say, hey, go start a business? No. Now you got your hand together, go preach, Jonah. The word was the same. And so I'm challenging you today as you stand. I'm challenging you today to fight to believe. We believe in what he said.